we have to get back to trusting our gut. If you know that you have communicated boundaries to a person that consistently continues to pull you over the borderline, borderline. She lives dark as a city and a light and beautiful and bright as the sun. The salt of the earth, fire burning and water dripping. How could we be using goddess of magic? She is timeless. The pillow that doesn't need a plug. She is the wildest woman. And let me say it again for those who need to hear it. The black woman. Is God. Let me say it again. The black woman is God. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. Welcome to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo. Listen up. Listen up. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo! I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman, and welcome back to my spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to the crew. But my returnees, you know what we do. If you like this video, well then, like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really and if you're feeling a vibe, well, go ahead on and subscribe. But before you blink, share this link. Welcome to another Coat of Personality episode of The Wireless Woman. In this content, we will be talking about reactive abuse. So, you already know what time it is. It is time to call the roll. I need all of my anxious Annie's and my nervous Nancy's to the front of the class. It's time to read aloud. I am a revolutionary and you're gonna have to keep on saying that. All right, welcome back to all of my old school Wi-Fi's, my dial-ups, and welcome in to my new school 5G Wi-Fi's. Today, we will be talking about reactive abuse. And before we get into the content, do me a favor as you head on in and like this video. Because of course, if you like it, well then I love it. And also subscribe to the channel and share my content. I am attempting to assemble a community of people where we can really begin to explore the collective consciousness everything is about sustainability and this community isn't just going to be an online community i'm hoping that as i go into my seasons of the wireless woman i can take you with me meet you in places and we begin to talk about farming economics political issues especially that are going on here in charlotte you know to actually be like-minded and meet where we can because I've taken a lot of time to look at a lot of the old speeches, Malcolm X, Angela Davis, you know, Fred Hampton, Stokely Carmichael, Kwame Torre, these black minds and intellectuals and the hope that they had for my generation. A lot of the progress that was made has been lost and we have to start somewhere. And a lot of the big movements that we saw in black liberation, like the Black Panthers, like the Black Nationalist Party, like the NAACP. These organizations started with just like-minded people coming together and beginning to organize on a community level. So we have the benefit of being able to connect with each other online and create networks that spread beyond just our community. So let's use it. Go ahead and share my content and comment 
interact with me. Give me feedback on how you feel that we can build it together. If you don't feel comfortable leaving some feedback in the comments, feel free to email me at admin at the wirelesswoman.com. I am honestly at your disposal. I have created this environment for us here in room 303, and I am going to respond to a question that I keep consistently getting about that. So room 303 does come from the matrix. The room 303 in the heart of the city hotel, this is the place where the red pills would go to get a line to dial out of the matrix back when you had to dial in and out of the internet, you know, way back in the prehistoric age of the 90s. So for me, room 303 is about creating a place and a space where people can come together, whether we agree on everything or not but begin to develop this collective consciousness because as much as we think the matrix is a construction from machines it actually is just the human mind you know it is a reconstruction of how the mind is created to work but so many of us have shut down our consciousness our imagination our ability to connect with our lifeline you know, which is the Godhead, the divinity that's within us that exists out in the universe and connects us through the earth. You know, we have to really begin to rewire our own mainframe in order to get back into that collective consciousness. So room 303 is that place. It's that place where we dial out, where we ask questions that we may not even always have the answers to, but we at least give ourselves permission to ask to explore, to question, to hope, to pray, to believe, to debate things, you know, and it will always remain that I made the conscientious decision not to monetize my channel or to seek monetization because I want to make sure no one else ever owns my channel. This channel is for us, by us, and you know, I don't ever want anyone to be able to take something that you or I have said down because this is our epistle. This is our record that we were here and that we thought independent thoughts, that we were not, that we would not go along with the machine, you know? So we're going to use social media, not let social media use us and feed on our brains here. So anyway. Reactive abuse. I'm constantly talking about the spirit of the age and the spirit of the age is narcissism. We're watching these people who have always been in the shadows, manipulating narratives and hurting and harming people and their reputation in ways that we kind of really couldn't put our finger on. There were always all of these movies where we saw this characterization like obsession and single white female and fatal attraction and swim fan and the perfect guy. And, you know, like you see it a lot more with females in movies than you see it with males. But anyway, you see these nefarious characters that come along and just ruin people's lives and damage them and create harm and havoc and drama. And not that all narcissists operate in this realm because that's kind of more of a psychopathy at that point but we're seeing it we're seeing this come out a lot more and more and more as we're dealing with social media where people can literally have an online persona that has nothing to do with their personal life where the false self in so many ways has become more real than the life that you live offline um, if you're not making significant investments in your life offline, you can find yourself living this completely fictitious existence. And I believe that that is what's really given the life breath to the spirit of the age, which is narcissism. But if we are going to remain cognizant and wise to the devices of our enemies and adversaries, well, we're going to have to, one, be courageous enough to admit that they exist. We're more and more being pushed along into an increasingly pervasive, demoralizing culture that says, accept 
everything except me, except my truth, even if it's a falsehood and a lie. So we really, really have to push back against that and live in reality, live in truth, and to be whistleblowers. Like when you were a kid, you were a snitch and a tattletale, and there was nothing glorious about being a whistleblower. However, we are at the point in time in history where it will be those who have told the truth that will be the bearer and the keeper of the record. So we have to, one, be willing to call out people that are full of crap, people that are full of bull. And two, we're going to have to become so much more skilled. You know, the Bible says be as meek as a dove, but as cunning as a serpent. It says be just as cunning as the serpent, but hold on to your meekness as a dove. And what allows you to remain meek? Because the term meek doesn't mean humble and submissive. The term meek means teachable. It means staying in a space where you don't know so much that you can't learn anything else. It was John C. Maxwell who said that the enemy of learning is knowing. So meekness is literally your deterrent against knowing so much that you can't learn anything else. So if we continue to be aware if we stay in our awareness and learn about this ever adapting knowledge base that's coming forward on narcissism, we can, as David from Ready to Love said, get in front of the enemy. You know, he probably was the enemy. Anyway, <laughs> we can get in front of the enemy, you know, and that's what you want to do. Reactive abuse is about what happens on the back end. It's about not getting in front of these gaslighting techniques. And as a survivor of narcissistic abuse, I can honestly say that if you do not stay ahead of the people who devise your demise, you will constantly be reactive. You will constantly be in an explosive energy that will degrade your reputation and make you look, as they will call you, like the crazy one. So, Reactive abuse, not to be confused with gaslighting. Like I said, it happens on the back end. It's when your narcissistic counterpart has mapped your brain like Alexa and Siri do. They map your preferences, the things that you like, the things that you hate, the things that make you happy, the things that make you sad, your vulnerabilities, things you share with them. They use all of those things, your strengths, your weaknesses to make a map of your brain and be able to anticipate how you will respond to certain stimulus. Okay. These people are calculated. They are artificial intelligence. They are simply in your life to map your brain and perfect the art of manipulation. So once they've calibrated you, learn what sets you off this person will strategically place you in situations to poke, poke, push, poke, poke you because you got to remember this person has groomed you into not reacting and responding. So every time they can get you to not react and respond to something that used to make you angry or set you off, they're going to up the ante on being able to do it again. So with reactive abuse, this person is going to push, push, poke, push, poke, and prod you into reacting. Generally, they're going to try to get you to do this in front of other people because they've already been working this smear campaign about you and getting people to rally on their side should the two of you ever break up. This person has to triangulate you with other people. These people are an extension of the grooming process. Should you try or want to leave, these other people have seen you be explosive or reactive. So they're going to side with the narcissist. They're going to tell you how you need to change and work on yourself. And a lot of times, even if you're not going off with that person, 
you're setting off bonds in your life outside of your relationship with that person that are also allowing people to look at you like, hey, you might want to evaluate yourself. You might really want to look into getting some help. So when that narcissist comes around with these tales of who you are, it lines up with what other people have seen you do. Now, I myself have been the victim of all sorts of narcissistic plots and manipulation, even outside of my intimate partner relationships. I was in college with a sorority sister that literally pulled off the setup of the century like if i had not been the victim of it it was so impressive that it was awe inspiring she almost got me kicked out of school she actually did get me arrested and somehow managed to pull it all off with the cleanest most angelic face it's it's if you've never experienced that type of veiled attack, what people say about narcissistic people won't make sense. It'll seem completely out of balance. And that's how they hide. They hide in plain sight. They hide in the ignorance of people. It's like the devil. The greatest thing that the devil ever did was to convince people that he didn't exist. And narcissists are much the same. And even as you're getting an influx of self-aware narcissists creating content on social media where they actually say i have done this stuff this is the stuff that narcissistic people do people still don't believe it it's like wild like at a certain point i was so wrapped up in my narcissistic relationship i thought i was a narcissist and the only way that i was able to actually distinguish myself from being a narcissist was the fact that I could actually, it was the fact that I could actually accept the existence of a narcissist and narcissism. You know, most of these people that live in this delusion of grandeur, it is their reality. Trying to pull these people out of their reality is like trying to wake a sleepwalker. And you have them on either side. Like when I talk about the zombie apocalypse, I really feel like that's what it is. It's narcissists and flying monkeys. It's narcissists and the people that believe them. It's Donald Trump and Trump supporters. Like all these people <laughs> come together and converge on the inexistence of this phenomenon. Like I don't believe that. I don't think that's what that person meant by that. I don't, I don't understand where you're getting it from. You're generally a very nice person and I mean don't get me wrong people have been falsely accused like I said I was on the other side of smear campaigns and narcissistic plots and fighting off flying monkeys with the force of yeah I mean these people have like bay hives of people that really support them and it makes it hard to even introduce the idea that that person might not be God but I say all of this to say that reactive abuse is a real thing. If you know, we have to get back to trusting our gut. If you know that you have communicated boundaries to a person that consistently continues to pull you over the borderline, borderline. You keep pushing me. Anyway, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. 80 strikes again. Okay. Anyway, if you see that person continually violating your boundaries, you're dealing with an abusive person. We don't want to call it that because we want to believe that people who love us cannot also abuse us. But that's grooming. You've been groomed at that point to believe that love exists in tension with torture and suffering and struggle love is not what we're going to do in 2022 you know if your gut is telling you that something doesn't feel quite right be like the black person in the horror movie and just go ahead and just we don't need to investigate that we don't need to see why the house is speaking we don't need to know that it was built over an indian burial ground just 
We just go, I'm going to head out. That's how we're going to handle those gut butterflies that keep telling us that something's not quite up with this friend or this relationship or even parents. I find that most people who consistently attract narcissists probably have a narcissistic parent. It's not just the way they are. They have a mental health disorder. That is not an ordered personality when a person is consistently making you feel like you're a problem that needs to be solved. I feel like this has to be said in my Cult of Personality series because narcissism is running rampant through the black community. We've been watching it for a long time now. You know, our rappers, they used to talk about the struggle of coming up in the ghetto and the hood and what they had to overcome to get to where they are. But the trauma now has been built into the way that we interact with each other. And now it's like these bitches, these hoes, they ain't shit. I'm the man. I slap these hoes. I... If I gotta slap a pussy ass nigga, I'm gonna make it look sexy. And we have gotten to the point where we have romanticized being abusive to each other. If I had to slap a nigga, I'm going to make it look sexy. Like we really glorify such toxic behaviors. Like we glorify it. I mean, Janae Aiko made her career off the worst, off of a song about having your boundaries violated and being made to feel worthless by someone and then your response is to in turn project that internalized rejection and speak and talk down on that other person instead of just removing yourself from the situation like we don't want to have songs and artistry about being healthy we want to turn into a city girl in response to having been mistreated so you know, hopefully this episode on reactive abuse has helped you to see some trigger points, you know, because it's great to have a long trigger, but you can actually remove the trigger. You can actually remove yourself from the situation or either learn enough about what this person is trying to get out of the situation, what this person's objective is to be able to disengage. Remember. Disengagement is one of the wireless woman's superpowers. It's all about being able to look at that situation and unplug like they did from the matrix. Be unbothered so that you can spend your time being unleashed, unleashing your potential, you know, being a healthy healing force instead of projecting rejection and manipulation that you've suffered at the hands of abusive people. The reason why it hurts is because you were abused. The reason why you can't forget it is because you've been traumatized. Don't let anyone cause you to not be able to connect with the truth of what happened to you don't let anyone invalidate your experience and cause you to live in falsehood and not be able to accept your own truth that acceptance is such a large part of your healing that acknowledgement that this did happen to me that i was mishandled you know, when we talk about drug abuse, we're not just talking about illegal drugs. You can be prescribed a drug and use it in the wrong way. You can marry a woman and use her outside of the purpose for which God gave her to you. And that is abuse. It is substance abuse. It is spouse abuse. It's emotional abuse, psychological abuse, financial abuse. And it's real. And it happened to you. And you have to accept that. Or else you're going to build a false self around your experiences. So as always, I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki. 
your neighborhood wireless woman we are going to continue to deconstruct and unpack these terms so that we can have healthier happier more vulnerable and transparent communication in our relationship but until the next episode i will see you in the comments class is now but you can't see that I'm empty. Come on, so